you could come to the conclusion that all things are in the human imagination, and that the imagination is capable of containing the imagining of space. Your dreams reveal that to you, for when you awake where did they happen? I have seen the stars, the moon and the sun in my dreams. The modern wise men would tell me it was just a dream and all in my imagination, but I have seen people just as clear as I am seeing you now, and we converse all in my imagination, so I will go along with the modern wise men in that respect. But when I awake, and things seem to be objective and independent of my imagination, was the other unreal? Not according to the book of Ecclesiastes. It is telling you that not everything is in your imagination, that your imagination is forever manifesting itself in the imaginations of men. This I do know. By simply assuming I am the man I would like to be, and mentally acting in harmony with my assumption, I have aided the birth of my desires and brought them to pass. I have played the game of assumption time and time again, and it has never failed me. When someone asks something of me, I simply assume they have what they want, then whatever needs to take place in this world, will take place, and bring it to pass, but where did the desire's fulfillment originate, but in my imagination? But if there is no escape from a world of recurrence, what would it matter, if you could perform miracles, be worshipped by all and possess the world if, in the end you would say, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. But Kohilath, the preacher, meant something far deeper than that. It is marvelous to know that the whole drama of life is taking place in your imagination. That you have the choice of life and death, good and evil, blessings and cursings, that you can by assumption have a rich and wonderful life, where everything is a blessing. But, if in the end, when you close your eyes for the last time you realize it was all vanity, would you not question what did it matter? That is what Kohilath is summing up. He is telling us that there is something greater and to wait for the fullness of time. When? No one knows, not even the Son, only the Father. But in the fullness of time, that which was placed in the mind of man will be revealed. Yes, I have been blind. I have been deaf. I have been dumb. I have been everything man can ever conceive of. I have been imprisoned, embarrassed, everything in the world. Not in this little section of time, but in my journey. I have played every part under the sun. I have seen it. One night I gave a banquet to all the parts I have played. Having sent all into the world, Messiah invited the high and the mighty, but they gave excuses and did not come. Then he told his servant to go into the highways and byways and bring all. And they brought the lame and the blind, the halt and the withered. This night I was lifted up on high and found myself in the human form divine. I was a radiant, glowing light. I didn't burn. It was just a glow that illuminated everything that I had been. I did not need the stars. I did not need the moon. I was the light. And as far as my eye could see, was an infinite sea of human imperfection all the parts that I have played. I knew they were waiting for me, yet as I glided by I didn't lift a finger to make one of them better than they seemed, but as I passed by eyes that were missing were replaced in the empty sockets, missing arms and limbs became perfect. Not one had a blemish in the end. And as I reached the end the grand choral group sang out, Neville is risen, Neville is risen, and when I reached the end they all exalted, it is finished, and I came back into this little garment I wear. Tonight I have told you who you really are, and although it is all vanity, you can be anything you want to be, generically. You can be a sinner or a saint, for you are passing through a fabulous world of opposites. And as Blake said, do not consider the just or the wicked to be in a supreme state, but to be every one of them in states of the sleep which the soul may fall into in his deadly dream of good and evil, when he left paradise following the serpent. So until the end we are asleep, dreaming strange dreams. We dream we are in prison and we dream that we are free. We dream we have money and we dream we are poor, and whatever we identify ourselves with, we externalize. So I can't deny the preacher's statement, but that one verse gives the hope, for without that verse, what would it matter tonight?
If there was no hope, no nothing. The intellectual mind cannot understand what God put in the mind of man, but I have told you what it is. You will never know that you are Jesus until his son explodes within you and calls you father. Then by implication you know who you are. Ito still the same name. The self that is raised and the self that is called father does not differ from the self that you were before, only now you include a far greater self who is none other than God the Father.